Hello, everyone. Welcome back to 999. We're here again in the engine room. Now, it seems like we were just here, and that's because we were, technically. But I wanted to pick this route especially because I knew that I'd already been in here recently. And with the way my memory goes, you guys, I figured it was good to get it out of the way now while I still had it fresh in my mind. So we're here again. And you guys have graciously told me that yes, I was right. To have some of the special dialogue happen, you have to play through the rooms because it's stuff that you might get as you're going instead of skipping regular dialogue. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play this room just like we've never been in here. Um, if, I, if I'm just clicking random things, I'm just gonna probably not read them unless it looks like something I haven't seen before. But I might read, uh, there's probably gonna be some things I read over just to be sure. Um, because apparently a really important conversation happens in here. I'd say this is probably here to move coal place to place. It probably comes from over there. And then the belt carries it down the tunnel and out here. So if the conveyor belt was moving, yes, the coal would almost certainly come out here. This is also going to give me another opportunity, I think, to kind of pay a little more attention to Ace. Because in the, the last time we were in here, I did notice that he was being a little bit strange. And um, I wonder if there's any more we can glean from that if we just pay attention to it now. I'm not sure. Pillar goes up to the ceiling. No big deal there. Right, if we open this, we realize that there's slots here. I don't know if you have to click on these things to satisfy anything, but we're just gonna, we're gonna do it just to say that we did it. Cause I'm pretty sure I did this the first time. We pressed it, nothing happens yet cause we don't have the parts for it. No big whoop. All right, so let us go. And we definitely have to look at all these because this is part of the puzzle, I believe. Golden gear. I think we have to touch this a couple of times. Then the rusty one and then the door in the back. And all of them have the door except the last one. So we're going to go ahead and do that like we did before. This is the bronze gear. Now, I don't know if we're going to get to the ending today. It depends how long this takes me because this room is quite large and I want to make sure that I have everything. And also we have the cargo room, which was large as well. But I think it's going to be interesting that we're going to kind of literally go back and like revisit these areas. Huge oven. There are three open areas in it. And they all have a gear in it. Well, we know that. Then we went back here. Now, I don't think we have to do everything in the exact order that I did it. Probably as long as we just look at everything is what I'm thinking. Here's the wooden boxes from before. <clears throat> I'm sorry, there's nothing in them. Sandbags! <laughs> Snowman secret meeting! Ace explains what sandbags are. Now, I don't know. Do you guys want me to go through this like normal, like I hadn't read it yet? You guys let me know about that. That's going to be your choice. The conveyor belt runs into a sort of arch tunnel. Here's the silver gear. They talk about, oh, I wish it was real silver or, or pure silver. If it was, it would be incredibly expensive. There's a pillar like this on the side. Have we even gone over to the other side to look at that yet? I didn't think that we had. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, I don't even fucking know. All right, uh, stairs. We can go to the other side later because I think it makes you look at that anyway when you bring the um, the boxes down for the pulley. So we can look at this. This is the puzzle we solved to get out. I think that means you have to insert something here. I just left that screen because, you know, that any euphemism screen, I feel like we should probably leave. Thick iron door. That's the way out to the next room. Can't do anything with that yet. Uh, and I don't think there's anything else to click here. So let's go ahead and go this way. Right. Man, this thing is huge. <clears throat> yep. I guess a ship this big needs something like that to power it. True, but I doubt a single boiler of this size could actually move a ship like this at any reasonable speed. You'd need at least three, no, four of these. Huh, I guess you know a lot about boats, huh? Well, not really. It's just common sense, you know. Mmm. So he knows a lot about boats, eh? Doesn't that seem a little... So Got everything now. I'm just gonna scrutinize. <laughs> I'm just gonna be like, Oh, really? You know about boats, do you? Well, dude. <laughs> Alright, this is the bronze gear. The rusty gear. The doorway. I think. Oh, I guess you can, you can technically click on the tunnel and all of them. I might have done that in the first one. I don't remember if I had... 
done or not. Stairs stretch from the cat out to the boiler. Number of these little windows along the inside of this. All right, we need to get up there because we have to go through the doors up there on the catwalk. Um, do we remember how we did it? Not really. I'll figure it out though. It's funny how I was literally just in here, but still in the scope of just being in here, what that means is it's been still like a few weeks, right? So time has passed where I haven't been looking at it. And I'm kind of like, oh, that's why I really wanted to get this out of the way. All right, this. Let's look at these. These two columns are different from the others. The lights are red. The lights are on. But you're not home. Did I make that joke before? Oh, I think I did. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Just seriously, dude. That's the door we came in, but you know that uh, if memory serves me, in every single one of these escape rooms, I have inadvertently clicked on the door we came in. <laughs> and people have yelled at me for it. <laughs> So I have to, I have to, now it's tradition. Now it's tradition to keep going in the door. All right, here's the A doors and all. And I don't think I'll get lost in here. It seemed fairly self-explanatory. It was just a little daunting at first. One of the doors in the furnace has an A on it. Circular wheel. Let's give that sucker a twist. That's what he said. Oh, yeah, spooky. Yep, but we're going in. Now that I know that nothing's gonna happen to me in there, it's totally okay. Maybe. All right, let's go. Now we're on the other side. This looks just like the door we went into. Uh, where are we? We must be on the other side, yes? Yeah, if it's just talk about how to escape the room, there's probably nothing I'm missing, I'm assuming. And, and technically, I could put Skip on for this, by the way. Oh, no, wait, no, you can't actually. People reminded me that you cannot do that in an escape room, which I guess is, I, I see why they did that. It's probably important not to. Um. Because what if someone clicks over everything by accident? <laughs> that would be me, by the way. When I said everyone, I meant me. Well, looks like that's the pipe. Looks like the bottom connects to the conveyor belt housing. Then coal must come out of this pipe onto the conveyor. All right, there's the coal. Here's the catwalk on the catwalk. I shake my little tush on the catwalk. Number of boxes over there that keep you from going over there. And then there's B, which I believe we have to go into next. Else, because we're on the other side of these stairs back down should be on the other side of these boxes. I'm just gonna go through this, you know, fairly fast. I'll draw the map inside my head, Ace, and then at the same time, I am going to suspect you and Santa of everyone. So, right now, we are totally team sus. That's what's happening here. Now, I didn't get to, to move this before, I don't think. I was checking out everything else but the wheel on the pulley, and then I broke it. <laughs> so I didn't know if there was any dialogue to pull the wheel first. All right, let's give this wheel a spin. Yeah, like Wheel of Fortune, Junpei. Go ahead and do it. What? That's weird. I don't feel any resistance. Ah! Ah, shit! Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that was pretty much the same as before. <laughs> That's funny, though. It's a wheel that seems to be part of the winch. There are pegs on the back that look like they goes into holes. It goes into the other side. We already know that. But let's click on everything anyway. Good job, Genius. You broke it. I didn't break it. It broke all by itself. I'm pretty sure this is all the same dialogue. We might have just gotten it in a different order. Uh, can't put it back on. It is broken like a hot dog down a hallway. And Ace is like, what the fuck? And no one, no one laughed at my hot dog joke, which again, I'm fucking, I'm gutted, dude. I, I honestly, I'm fucking gutted. But come on, it was funny, no? It wasn't funny, apparently. I'm just gonna keep clicking this until I feel it was funny. <laughs> I don't fucking know. All right, so now we can go back because this way is blocked off over here. So we can't go that way. So we go back through B, I believe. And then we're gonna wanna go to C on the other side. I'm pretty sure that's what we want. But we can look at these boxes all the same. So this will be faster, I think, until we get to math. Although I did write math down, so we should be good. And then also, uh, the sliding box puzzle, I did write a little bit of that down, but I think that's also gonna come down to, do I remember the steps I took to fix it? So that one might be a little bit more normal. The hand-operated winch. Uh, there's no wheel to turn. Oh yeah, I've got the wheel I pulled off the other winch, don't I? Let's see if it fits. Yeah! Sweet, it's a perfect fit. Like they were made for each other. 
Not shaky at all. Good. I should be able to turn it now. Good work, Junpei. We should be able to haul up the wooden box now. You see? The wooden box? It's under the catwalk. Can you see it? Why are you so happy about this damn box? You are so sus right now. By the way, I did get the cursor working again. I don't know what... Of course, I got it working, like, in the last, you know, fourth of the video. But don't worry about that. Like, I mean, the LP. Like, that's just my style. Break something, and then one day, it's magically working once more. So we have the cursor back. Now I can do things like pick his nose and point to things that actually work. All right, Ace is counting on me to turn a wheel. Well, I can do that. What happened? This wheel only turns to the left. It only turns to the left? That means we can't reel up that rope. Yeah. We can only let the rope down. Interesting. I don't think that will be a problem. We will simply need to go downstairs after letting the wooden box down. I'll be counting on you, Junpei. Alright, I mean, I, I listen, I can turn something to the left. Don't you worry about me. I'm not that bad. Maybe I even made the same dialogue before. Ooh. I believe the box has reached the floor. Okay, so I don't know which one of these dialogues is going to be different, so we've got to we've got to watch them all. Yeah. He stuck his head out over the side of the catwalk and looked down. I believe we had this last time. The box that had only recently hung just below the catwalk now sat on the floor. It had come to rest near the end of the tunnel that covered the conveyor belt. June's down over by there. Jinpei could see her, still leaning against the wall, as if she barely had the strength to sit up. Man, I wonder if we're going to figure out more about this predicament. The fact that where June keeps getting just sick inadvertently, like, in different spots. Well, I do hope so. Even from so far away, it was not difficult to see that she had not improved. He almost thought he could see heat rising from her body. She doesn't seem to be improving. It was just so weird how she gets so sick so fast and then is better once I solve her room. We, oh, we've got to figure out about that, I'm sure. They better tell me. Well, of course not. She's not going to just get better right away, you know? It'll take time. Right. We did have this conversation before. So far, it looks good. What could be causing this, I wonder? Like, Illness, perhaps? maybe you did it. I don't know anymore. Yeah, it's maybe, gotta be exhaustion. Maybe you did it, Santa. Talking to me about black and white Santas, and then at the end of the fucking run of that, I got killed by somebody. Maybe you're the black Santa. She gets Santa. dropped into some weird ass ship, forced to play some messed up game. Maybe I don't trust. Uh, honestly, I don't trust a single it, one. A weirder that we aren't freaking out just like her. I ain't. You know? I ain't trusting a single one of these people except Lotus. So you're saying uh, we're Lotus. abnormal? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're just running around this room, solving all these puzzles like it's just business as usual. Listen, Santa's so blunt that I want to trust the hell him. Could you call that normal? Under normal circumstances, We're just I would. Guinea pigs. But I can't. A guinea pig? You mean like a lab rat? You mean we're being used for some sort of experiment? I do think that this is the case now, for sure. Is that what you're saying? I really do. Don't know. Especially after the end of the last one, where we found out that there may have been a way for most people, if not all, to escape if things hadn't gone awry. So that makes me believe that that was the plan for them to figure well, out the escape route. It does seem like a possibility. It doesn't seem know? like to stop them indefinitely, unless they're too stupid, <laughs> which, you know, sometimes we are. All right. No one's speaking. This, I think that was all the same. So let's keep you know, going. Speaking of experiments. Eh? What? Santa suddenly stopped. There was this experiment some scientists did with rats. Did... Is this new? I can't... Oh, no, I can't remember. I hate when my memory doesn't work. Wait, no. First, they took a squarish C-shaped tank and filled it with enough water that the rats could drown in it. Oh, no, we've not seen this. What is this? Oh, I don't like this. No, no, don't drown the ratties. Leave them alone. The tank has two exits. Right? Just to make it easy, we'll call one A and the other B. Oh, okay. Exit A is pitch black. So dark, even a rat can't see anything. Okay. But exit B is electrified, which means the rat can't leave through it. Uh, okay. So, what would a rat do if it was put in this situation? I don't like this. No, I don't want to think about that. Guys, I'm very sensitive about treatment of animals, by the way. Like, it's like the one, it's one of the one things that will just ruin my entire day. Which exit would the rat choose? Oh no, oh no. There was a moment of silence after Santa posed the question and then Ace responded. B, of course. The rat has no way of knowing that exit B is electrified. 
I don't like that. Exactly. The rack goes to exit B. Okay. Of course, like I said, it's electrified. Oh. Uh. Which means the rack can't get out that way. Okay. So, after a lot of trial and error, yeah, the rat finally finds exit A. Okay. Hmm. I can't say that's very interesting or relevant. <laughs> it's simply the story of a laboratory experiment. What it was pro Ace, shut up. We're listening to this story. Well, I don't wish we were, but You're right. It isn't very interesting yet. What do you mean? Hmm? No, I don't want to hear See, more. Oh. These scientists repeated this experiment over and over. Okay using hundreds of different rats over several generations. Leave the animals alone. This produced some surprising results. Uh-huh. With each generation, the rats took less time to find the correct exit. Okay, they, be they were becoming smarter as they grew, like as they evolved. Eventually, a rat was put in the tank who instantly chose exit A without even attempting to go to exit B. Okay, but could that have just been coincidence? But that wasn't the most impressive part. Okay. The same experiment was conducted in another laboratory, far from the original one, with the same results. So rats are getting smarter. This is, this, this story is still hinging on the same principles of other stories that we've heard. About uh, spores and, and bacteria remembering things, crystals remembering different things around the world. These are all the same things. I, in a way, they're no, related. On second thought, the results weren't really the same unless this is all just bullshit but it's still kind of in the same wheelhouse as things all over the world changing because of one scenario the rats in this second experiment began the trials with significantly faster times than the first rats in the initial one they're becoming smarter these rats weren't related to the others and had never even come in contact with them and yet i mean rats are you know we, we got one rat you got three million rats i'm pretty sure rats are all connected somehow through some kind of mind thing they all easily found their way to exit a as though they already knew and rats are incredibly damn smart what did it mean i don't know this is weird why are we getting this now though are you suggesting something like telepathy this must be the thing we were supposed to see they were passing information to one another through some undetectable medium? Is that what's going on here on the ship? Are we like maybe like the 30 or 40th group of people to pass through here to see what would happen? And the reason I'm saying that is because we already got into the point about Seven kind of being related to this in a previous manner. And Lotus is also through her children Remember? She mentioned her children had gone to a hospital. The hospital that in the very, very beginning of this LP was possibly linked to whatever the hell is going on here. So are we like descendants of people that have been working on this or something? Mm, I'm starting to think that, that might be a thing, but we'll have to find, we'll have to just wait and find out. Ace looks skeptical. Santa snorted at him. <laughs> How the hell would I know? Listen, I don't know either. I'm not any kind of scientist. I don't know what made him do that. <laughs> But you I do know want to pass on your good true. story. And if you've got another explanation, I'd sure love to hear it. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Come on, let's get going. There's still a lot here we haven't checked out. All right. I wonder if there's going to be any more additional dialogue about that. And we got to get the hell out of here before June passes out. That that too. Let's go. Without waiting for a response, he turned around and started walking. Junpei, however, wasn't quite ready to leave the topic alone. Hey, wait. There's something I want to ask you. Oh, okay. What is it, Junpei? What? Santa stopped and turned around. Why did they use that tank for the experiment? Okay. Huh? The, with the water, you mean, Junpei? Well, I mean, it seems like you could conduct the same experiment without the water. Is that related to us being on a ship? Like the, the, the fear of drowning? Oh, it might be. They could have just used a dry box, you know? Okay. If they needed to motivate the rats to escape, they could have, I don't know, put some bait by exit B or, or something. True. I mean, do they really have to make it so the rats can drown? I hate that part too. Santa gave a grim bark of a laugh. You know, the word emergency comes from the same root as the word emerge. Interesting. You ever think about that? <laughs> huh? Well, an emergency is something urgent, often something dangerous. True. And to emerge means to sort of come out, or appear, or rise out of something else. Right, okay. So what's going to emerge in an emergency? Inspiration. Okay. Inspiration? 
Yeah. Think about it. When the chips are down, either you crack or your mind focuses and pulls up what you need. I see. So in an emergency, your real potential emerges. Is that what you're saying? Is that what's going on here? Maybe that's what maybe that's part of what they're researching. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's why the rats had to drown. They had to be in danger. There had to be an emergency for inspiration to emerge. Oh, that's got to be related to this though. Now some of them I weren't I wasn't sure about. But it must be, right? Oh. But maybe not. This could be a red herring, but let's let's just keep it in mind though. Oh, okay. Jinpei suddenly felt cold. The back of his head was aching and his stomach felt strange. What's wrong, Jinpei? Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Interesting. So we've done it. And I, okay. <laughs> All right. So did we send the box to the ground? I believe we did. So now we have to go uh, back down the way we, we came back. So let's go back down to A. And go down the stairs. And I believe now we can go around here and look at a Z box. Oh wait, yeah? No? Where was it? Z box. <laughs> control panel for something. Some kind of machine. Maybe a control panel. I think that's all it says. Oh yeah, Santa just says the same thing. Well, we know where it goes goes in here maybe this hole is where the control panel goes well there's one way to find out hey there we go dude you did it everything looks all right okay but what do we do now P press the press the button cronk come on do it yeah all right there it goes here comes the coal lots of coal for santa all right, we've done it. And now it's done. Cool, huh? Yeah, look at it all. All right, now we're gonna transport it right to get the other things working. All right, I love it. Uh, now I believe we take the box filled with coal. It's really only one thing you can do. <laughs> Throw it everywhere like poop. One box full of coal. There's only one thing you can do with it. Yep. All right, we're gonna go this way, and we are going to put it in. Remember these things? I. It's funny that I totally forgot to click on them again until we got to this point. I. I wanted to click them before this because I forgot to in the last playthrough, and I totally still didn't. So we're gonna fill these with coal. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything there like important. There's a hole that'll let us put coal in the furnace. Maybe if we can get some coal in there and set it on fire. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, boy. All right. Well, we gotta light it or something, don't we? We gotta use the panel upstairs. Jinpei, explain it to me again. You're planning to stoke the furnace with coal? Which will heat the water stored up there and make steam. Which will then drive something else. Am I correct? Yeah, we gotta make the gears work so we can get the plates for the puzzle, right? All right. Hmm, well, in that case, this isn't enough. Yeah, the furnace is really big, so they're gonna have to... Aw, June wants to help, but she's not feeling so good. Go, go rest. This is all the same, I believe. Sorry, I'm just clicking through. If we can get it to a point where I've solved this room and start the cargo room in the next one, then we should be in a good place for the ending, because that's where we got it last time. So the timing on that will be pretty good. Man, what- oh, that conversation with Santa kind of- mm, Now my head's in a tizzy about it, though. Alright, this should be sufficient. Alright, now we just gotta light it. Ew, they must be dirty as hell. I mean, I'm sorry, even if you try to be, like, clean, involving coal of any kind, you just can't. Like, even if you had gloves on or whatever, it, it's impossible. That shit gets everywhere. Like the dust, and also breathing in the dust. Real freaking dangerous, actually. All right. Uh, we will light it by going upstairs and doing this duty. Do, 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 dad. And we put the switch on. Is this? I think it might be. It probably is. I think this is how we might ignite the furnace. 
That means that if we move that thing down... All right, let's do it. Here we go. Yeah. Hey, Junpei Ace, look at this. There's big gears turning under the boiler here. Perfecto, there they go. All right, and there's our plates. Perfect. The gears, they're spinning. What the hell are you guys waiting for? Let's start looking. Now I wonder, are we still gonna get the conversation that Santa had with us about the white and the black Santa? Because that was really interesting and I kind of want to hear it again. All right, we got the gold disc. The gold disc. It has a number of lines engraved on it. I can make out three colors. I think this is all the same. I'm just gonna keep doing it again just to make sure that we've looked at everything appropriately. I don't want to fuck up now. We've come too far. Bronze disc. Same. And then the silver one. It's back here. I don't know why this... I don't know why looking at these makes me think of, like... The Olympics. <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything. Maybe it's just because the Olympics are on right now. Maybe it's because, like, they remind me of something the Olympics had, like, as a design in the 80s. I, I just... I don't even know. But I, I swear to God, every time I'm so far that I've looked at those... <laughs> I was like... <laughs> That's the way I'm thinking of the Olympics. It's weird. All right, let's see if I remember how to do this. I think I do. It's pretty easy. You just line up the lines. So it's probably more than one way to, to move them to make it work. All right. <clears throat> let's put them in. Boink. Nothing's happening. Well, you gotta move them, of course. I mean, who the hell would be lucky enough to put them in the right place at once? Instructions for operation. When the disc is clicked, it will rotate a certain amount. When the white arrow is clicked, the discs are switched. Please note when the discs are switched, the angles for the discs are reset. Thank you, tutorial chan. Okay, how did I do this in the last time? I think I... Uh, I think I switched. I'm pretty sure I had the silver on top. Yeah, because I wanted to try... To, I, what I was trying to do at, at first was get this red sun started up here. And then I think I can switch these. And they just rotate them. Oops, almost. Bum, bum. Of course, this will take me longer than before. So I think what you just want to do is put them towards the center. Yeah, like that. Oh, just this one left. Hog. There we go. All right, the red lines on these discs. I think maybe I can make a star polygon with these. Spirograph, that's another thing, but those obviously look like Spirograph. All right, we did it. Hey, you found it, bitches. We fucking found it. Even though I was just in here before. <laughs> so smart. Yes, the door's open. All right, let's do it. Given the circumstances, Junpei's happiness was certainly understandable. Ace seemed to share his excitement. All right, Junpei. Why don't you go get June now? All right. Leave you alone, Santa and Sus I will keep an eye on the store. Sussy Daddy Baka. Santa snorted. Why do we need to do that? <clears throat> Even if it shuts, we know how to solve the puzzle now. We could just open it again. True. Well, I suppose that's true. I mean, we did it in the last one. Shall all three of us go and collect June then? If you want. Nah, I'm cool. I'll let Junpei handle it. Yeah. He still seemed irritated by something, however, and sat down on the stairs petulantly. So are you only interested in being contrary? Maybe. Ace sighed with the air of long-suffering parent. All right, I'll go get June. I'll be right back. Okay. He gave a quick nod to Ace and Santa and dashed off down the stairs. Before long, he was back on the first floor next to the conveyor belt and June. Oh, Jumpy! Hello. As he drew closer, she stood up slowly. Are you okay? He did his best to sound calm and nonchalant, but there was no hiding the genuine concern in his voice. Yes, I'm fine now. I'm sorry I made you worry. It's okay. Jim blushed. He wasn't sure if she was embarrassed or still feverish. Uh, let me check. Just to make sure, he reached out and put his hand against her forehead. <gasps> Girl, please, it's just a hand. Good. You're feeling a lot better. She was feeling far less warm than she had earlier, but still wasn't down to what normal seemed normal. Are you to him. sure you're all right? Yeah, really. 
He had to be sure. June gave him a look. Oh, you're such a warrior, Jumpy. Uh. Oops, I mean, <laughs> warrior. <laughs> June giggled. <laughs> he wasn't sure if she just made a joke or not, but seeing her smile again made Junpei feel at ease. If she was well enough to smile and laugh, well, then she really was feeling much better. He gave her a friendly poke on the forehead. All right, let's go. Go where? We opened the door. Oh, right. I didn't tell you. This we got is all the exit same. open, so... Great! Let's go! Jun clasped her hands and nodded urgently. Let's go. Now, isn't this where we got uh, Santa talking about that thing? I wonder if we're, I wonder if we're gonna get it now. They head back to the exit, but on their way they found... Oh, it's... Santa? What's up? And now is... I wonder if this is gonna be different or not. <clears throat> I do like this. Santa was sitting on the stairs. He was, however, holding something in his right hand and staring at it with a strange expression. Junpei and Jun slowed down and finally stopped in front of him. What are you looking at? I wonder if this conversation is any different. I wonder if I'll remember if it is, is the thing. Santa answered without looking up, his voice quiet. It's a photo. It's my sister. Yeah. Sister? Santa, you've got a sister? Santa simply nodded. Yeah. Kid was cute as a button. See, he says was. Tell me more about that. She was only about an inch tall then? Oh, <laughs> June, come on. <laughs> Santa glared at her. Oh, sorry. I guess an inch is a little large for a button. Probably more like a half inch. <laughs> mm. Right. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> I don't know. Santa didn't smile or laugh. Sorry. Why are you looking at it? Because <sighs> he wants to. He simply turned back to his picture and spoke. I was her Santa Claus. Aww. Wait, what? This sudden revelation took Junpei by surprise. He had no idea what Santa meant. He glanced at Jun, who shook her head. She didn't know either. We didn't have parents. They bought it in an accident when we were still kids. What? Is that new? Oh, no, I hate... That's kind of important. So I had to be like her dad. Okay. And that meant that I bought her Christmas presents every year. Oh. On Christmas Eve, I'd leave the present next to her pillow. Oh, that's so sweet. This is definitely new. And the next morning, she'd come running into my room with this big smile. Look, look, Santa left me a present. He got me that doll I really wanted. Oh. I'm so glad he got my letter. Oh, no. She was always so excited. I was the one who told her to write those letters. Oh my god, this music is killing me. I'd say, write down something you want and mail it to Santa. Yeah. The address I gave her was somewhere in Northern Europe that doesn't exist. Anyway, she'd write the letter and stamp it and send it out. Right. And then a few days later, it'd show up back in our mailbox marked address unknown. Oh. I'd open the letters before she figured out they'd been sent back. Once I had the letter, I'd go around to a couple stores with some money I'd saved up over the year and buy her the stuff she'd asked for. Oh, that's so sweet. It took a lot of saving, but I managed to buy her presents every year. That's so nice of you. Huh. Jinpei was silent. He could think of nothing to say. Huh. Jun looked down uncomfortable. The wall next to him suddenly groaned. Either he hadn't heard the sound or didn't care. Santa kept talking. But one year, her letter was different. Oh no. She didn't write a list of toys she wanted or anything like that. Okay. Instead, it said, I don't want any presents this year. Right. Instead, I want you to make my wish come true. My wish is that we'll be happy like this for a really, really long time. Aww. That was it. Nothing else. But I couldn't make that wish come true. Why not, Santa? What happened? Some Santa I am. Oh no. Santa looked sad. Junpei had never seen him look sad before. He wasn't sure he liked it. Jinpei decided it was probably best not to ask Santa any more questions. But... What happened? Oh, of course, June, of course. Jun glanced up at Santa quickly as she spoke. He answered, but only with effort. She died. 
I had a feeling. She was killed nine years ago. <gasps> what the fuck? It's related. Why is everything nine in here? Oh, stop. How was she killed? Oh. <gasps> there was nothing Junpei could say. His heart felt like a great lump of lead. June bit her lip and looked away. Her face was pale. All right, let's go. That's it. It's related, isn't it? Everybody here must have some kind of relation to whatever happened nine years ago. Oh, okay, yeah, that's really important. So maybe that was the important thing we had to see, but we also saw the thing about the rats and I don't remember seeing that before. Santa stood up suddenly, his downcast demeanor gone. He shoved the picture back in his pocket and headed back up the stairs, taking them two at a time. Well, I really wanted to see the picture. Hmm. Huh? Oh boy. Jinpei and Jun looked at one another. There was nothing they could think of to say. Hey, what are you two doing? Let's get moving, come on! All right. Sansa's voice echoed throughout the room from above them. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. They nodded and followed him quickly up the stairs. Ace was waiting for them at the top. He was leaning against the handrail. He looked very tired. Oh, you're finally back. Listen, we had important things to do. The door had shut, but it wasn't cause for concern. Sorry we took so long. Jinpei quickly solved the disc puzzle a second time, and the door opened once again. Man, so this, this is interesting because... Let's go. The first thing that Santa talked about in the last ending was how there was a black and white Santa and someone could be good or bad and he wondered which one he was. That was part of the reason why I suspected him killing us in that ending. Because they made it a point to say that he didn't know which. And then, this now we're getting this dialogue? So what, it, what does it mean? Alright, I think this is the same. So this should be the cargo room we're going into now. Yep, here we are. All right. Uh, is, is this a warehouse? And we are going to solve this puzzle and hopefully see what happens to us after this in the next episode. Wow. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am, and I will see you soon in the next one. Toodaloo.